Hey guys and gals, Perry here, and I am No One You Know, back for StoryToPixel.com, and today we're going to talk about the Pet Kodak Pix Pro SP360. We've already done one tutorial on uh, how to shoot HDR on an SP360. If you go back to that, it gives you all the instructions on that, how to use the app, how to use the camera, so I'm not going to really hash that over again. So basically what you have is one of the cameras the camera is 360 degrees round by 210 degrees up and down. So VR is ideally 360 by 360. This, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to actually buy a second one. I set up a rig. I got all these little pieces as Sammy's camera, and I'll give you all the part numbers for that. I did a little trimming here. I haven't fully tested it here. I may have to do some trimming here and here. But uh, this enables me to shoot 360 by 360. I usually have an app loaded on an iPhone and an iPad or on two iPads so that I can control each camera separately. So let's dive into this. So you take two pictures basically, one from one camera and one from the second camera, and you end up with something like this. Two fish eyes. Okay, one's front, one's rear doesn't really matter but if you have any you know action in a front camera you need to label it as such and you can figure it out first thing it needs to happen is we need to open these up in Photoshop because if you remember on the HDR tutorial mm -hmm, you need to be able to map this onto a hemisphere if you do it with the fisheye as it is, it is, it distorts severely. So you have to go into filter, distort, polar coordinates, make sure it is polar to rectangular, hit OK, and then save it. Same thing with this one. So now, if I go to here, you will notice. Now keep a copy of your raw files. Uh, you know, I have the raw files in another folder. I had I just replaced the ones, so it didn't matter because I already had them in another folder. It looks strange, but what has happened? It took the originals. And I'll show you again. Center pixel, and it maps it to the top. That's the polar coordinates. It twists everything around like this. So now this can be mapped onto a hemisphere. So what I do is I'm going to go into Cinema 4D and I got a rig for you. I don't know nice person. So all I have to do is find your front camera and I pick number five. Nope. And I pick, pick number seven. Nope. So now you're left with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to interactive render region so I can see what's happening. And everything is, is in this user data setup up here. I have, I have control over the cameras here so I can turn around, see what it looks like. And when you stop, it renders. I tend to work off of zero and 180 on the camera headings because that is where the stitching errors are going to be. That's where the actual stitch is. And so that's zero, and that's going to be 180. Actually, I'm going to do a different one, because this particular one is a little difficult to see the stitching. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see it with the compression YouTube puts on it. So this one is going to be much better. So now we have number six and number eight. And on this one, the camera is 180 here. And that is zero in the heading. 
is going to make it easier on the stitch. If I take it and spin it around, I can spin around if I want. I can look up and down. I can even bank it. You have all the control. You don't need to dive into the file structure or anything. It's right there. So I'm just going to put the camera at 180. This makes it easier for the stitching because I lined up to the lamppost here. So what I have next is you go down here to underneath front and rear. I have a stitcher's position and a stitcher width. Now what this is, is a gradient. Now what this is, is a gradient I've applied to one of the hemispheres so that I can change the position of the gradient and watch the lights. See it's kind of faded out. So if I bring it in, what it's doing, it's bringing the, the, the stitcher is moved right here. So you can see it's so called, you can see the stitcher in a couple of different ways. You can see how the gradient of the sky has changed and you can see how the lamp changes. I can move the, ch the stitcher and I can also change the width of the gradient itself. So what it is, an alpha channel applied to, I think the rear camera, to the rear picture. The alpha channel is applied as a gradient and you can set the position of it and you can set the width. So right now it's full wide and I can bring it over like that. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, set it to the setup that I have determined earlier. So that was 23.49. And then it was 26.98, so let's put it three. Just to show you, if you go into layers and turn on, I think it's sphere, you can actually see the material. I have a layer set up, so normally I have it off. I just have the bare minimum. So if you go into the layers section and turn on the sphere, you can see the materials. It's the material on the right. Click it open. There's an alpha. Go to the alpha section. Double click on the gradient texture. And then what you can do is I like to use a mouse that's more precise. So there, 23.49. I'm going to click the white. And then what I'm going to do, and uh, Let's do this. Uh, create a, another little screen there. And uh, now, here we go. Go down here. Uh, there we go. The good number was 26.98. And I'm going to go to Stitch Width. And I'm going to increase it until it's 26.98. And I'll hold down Shift. There we go. 2698, there we go. On the and on the black, the, the ideal position was 23.49, and that gave me a good stitch. So I'm gonna go right here. I, I'm gonna go back to layers and I'm gonna turn off the sphere. And then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna turn on everything. So right now you can look. And you can see the gradient on the blue is smooth. So what you have is two different cameras. So when it shoots, it can change the lighting. And now I'm going to do another video on best practices on sh with shooting two SP360s. So where you want to set your main light sources, where you want to set your main action. And that will be a, a separate video. Right now, I've got a perfect stitcher position. I can turn it from zero on the camera to 180 to zero. It looks pretty good to me. This is a good thing to mess around with. You've done all this. I mean, look, you can look up. It looks nice. So you can look straight up. You can look straight down. 
Let's see what it looks like straight down. Now, that's the next thing. This is the reflective ball to re bake the reflection. So I'm going to go ahead and set this back to zero. Camera pitch. Camera heading, I like 180. I like the light. So now we need to get a picture out. We just need to bake the reflection that we set up on the reflective ball. Everything is done there. Everything. All you have to do is put your file name. So I'm going to find a path for it. Tutorials times two output. And I'm just going to call this bake one. Okay. The format, I'm just going to make it a ping. I'm going to make it 6,000 by 3,000. You'll notice that if I put 4,000 on the width, it automatically compensates to 2,000. It has to be a 2 to 1 equirectangular. rectangular. That's why I did that. So, And here's the instruction for bake. Go to the texture tag and press bake button. And if I open this up, there's the texture tag right there. And I just hit bake. It does its job. And, and, let's see here, where is it? Up it. There we go. And we are left with an equi rectangular of this scene. There is the center right there. The whole thing will wrap around your head. And if you decide that you want the center to be on the light pole, the best thing to do is, let me see if I can remember this. There it is. It's on filter, other, offset. You do that, you can move the offset around on the horizontal, just like that. So whatever is in the center is going to be the center of the shot. So right now I'm going to set it to zero. I'm going to go back to offset, actually. Well, clicking the top didn't do it, so I have to go back. There you go. Okay, that's zero. Uh -huh. Don't really need to mess with the vertical. You can see what that does. No good. That's it. Make sure it's set on wraparound. And that is it. Okay, uh, I need, at this point I need to show you something because uh, this may affect you and this is a bit of troubleshooting. Uh, in the equi rectangular that I have put out, you can notice here it looks good, but if you get up in here, there is a seam. It goes down and then it kind of just disappears. Now, what is this? This is not one of the scenes, let me get there. This is not one of the scenes that we created here and on its opposite end here. That's not the gradient seam right there. This seam is, it took me a while to figure this out, but this is where the scene is from. Uh, if we go back here, and this is the original spherical, and when we converted it uh, into, from polar to rectangular so that we could map it onto uh, it's half of the sphere actually what that does is in our original it takes the center point and it puts it at the top and twists everything around and you end up with this so now it's up at the top this is the problem that seam is here where this and this meets on the hemisphere um, it's a slight bit of an alignment f issue. So how do you get around that? It's really easy. Before you do the polar coordinates, you double click the background layer, hit OK, so that it unlocks it, and then transform, Command T, and then I just right click and I say rotate 180 degrees. Now, 
when I do it. Uh, let's see here. Filter. Okay, got to hit enter. Filter. Distort. Polar coordinates. Hit OK. You end up with, and uh, I'm just going to show you what it looks like compared to the other one. You end up with, instead of this, which was the original, where the pavement is in the center and the tree and the house are on the outside, it's the other way around. So that all your good information is not distorted or have the possibility of edges being slightly off. It's going to be on the pavement, which uh, in this case actually works out better. And I'll show you. Sorry, folks. And if you get up into here, look at that. It looks good all the way down. And on the pavement, if there is any issue, you're not, there's a little bit there, but you're really not going to notice that. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier to clean up if you have to in Photoshop or something like that. But you're not going to look, uh, people are going to be more interested in looking up. They'll just give a quick glance down and say, yep, that's pavement, and then look up. Uh, they probably won't notice it uh, if it's the other way in the seams up here because it's so far away. But uh, if it disturbs you or if you notice it on something that you are doing, that's how you get around it. Is And you have to, if you make one of the front cameras or the right cameras, you flip it before you do the polar coordinates. You have to do it to both of them. You can't do it to one and not the other. Now, this is the problem. It's not really a problem. It's just it comes in flipped. So I've got a little switch here. It says flip view. Use to reorient view right side up if polar coordinates have been flipped. So just flip view. Voila. So now I can pitch up and down. Camera heading. Looks nice and beautiful. Then you can go, go ahead and turn around and bake. And I'm going to be doing more experimenting with video. I have not shot video with this rig yet. I need to check some other things first. That will be coming in an upcoming video. So now you have an equi rectangular that you can uh, use in certain apps in an iPhone or Android. And it translates the equi rectangular into the proper setup for Google Cardboard. Uh, I use a Homino, which is like a fancy Google Cardboard with a fancy strap. Uh, there's other apps on Android, I imagine, do the same thing, but you can also just get into After Effects and load up the Equa Rectangular and, and load it up into the left and the right view on the 3D eyes, and then you can output it any way you want. You can side by side or uh, top and bottom. Okay, one other caveat. Uh, remember on the HDR um, tutorial I did uh, with the SP360, I told you about watching for the puckering at the poles. That's straight up and straight down. And the way to solve it is if you put the texture like on a sphere, uh, all you had to do was just go to the texture tag itself and underneath texture change the sampling from MIP to something like alias 1 and that gets rid of it. Okay, uh, the thing is, is when you uh, take this equi rectangular and you put it into uh, an app so that you can look at it on your iPhone in the proper format or in, in like a Google Cardboard or a Homido uh, HMD uh, or, you know, maybe even an Oculus, I don't know if... Um, they actually apply uh, any type of aliasing or use MIP. So you might see puckering uh, at the top and the bottom. And there's really nothing you can do about it as far as I know. If I am wrong, please correct me in the comments. I'd appreciate it. Uh, so that is something to look out for. And uh, Okay, and I'm also going to do another video on the different output options for virtual reality. I think this is important. So right now, this is it. So go out and shoot some stuff. Uh, SP360s are at a really good price right now. It's really good quality. It's double the quality of the Theta. Uh, it's maybe a little bit better than the Theta S that's coming out, but there is a new 4K version of the SP360 coming out. 
that's 4k per camera which will give you back to back and they have a rig that's already built in their accessory kit you don't have to build it like i did and you can mount two of them back to back in this new bracket i am looking forward to that because that's considered a really good resolution for vr yeah, because, you know, AMD is already talking about you're going to need 16K in the future. So 8K is really leading towards that. So if you like, uh, leave a comment, uh, subscribe, uh, go out there and shoot some stuff, have some fun. Uh, I'll have a link to uh, on the YouTube page. I'll have a link to my website where you can download the Cinema 4D file that you see here. The template makes it real easy. Go out and shoot some stuff with your two SP 360s and make your own stuff. Um, if you like the video, if you like anything that we're doing here at StoryPixel.com, please, you'll see our author page on the right. Uh, it's both for my Self, no one you know, and for uh, G.R. Legrand, which is Robert's uh, author page. That's what he writes under. He writes more fantasy. I write a bunch of other different things. We have books as low as 99 cents. Show your appreciation. Buy a book, do a review on Amazon. It really helps a lot. So for storytopixel.com, this is Perry, and I am no one you know.